Crows are capable of conscious thought. This is what scientists demonstrate for the first time. This is on Bended Reality by Michael Starr, Science Alert. New research into the minds of crows revealed a jaw-dropping finding. These canny corvids are not just clever, they also possess a form of consciousness able to be consciously aware of the world around them in the present. In other words, they have subjective experiences. This is called primary or sensory consciousness, and it had only previously been demonstrated in primates, which means we now may have to rethink our understanding of how consciousness arises, in addition to reconsidering the avian brain, the bird brain, that is. Now, the results of our study, this is what University of Tübingen, Andreas Nieder, the animal physiologist, says. The results of our study opens up a new way of looking into the evolution of awareness and its neuro neurobiological constraints. Consciousness is difficult to pin down in animals that don't speak. It's the ability to be aware of oneself and the world around you, to know what you know, and to think about that knowledge. It enhances problem solving and decision making, at both of which crows excel. Primary consciousness is the most basic form of consciousness as we categorize it, awareness of perceiving the world in the present and the immediate past and future. Primarily, it's been associated with the primate cerebral cortex, a complex layered region of the mammalian brain. But bird brains are structured quite differently from the primate brains and are smooth where mammalian brains are layered. So even though corvids, the bird family that includes crows and ravens, are incredibly smart, with cognitive abilities found in primates, questions remained over whether they could cross the line into conscious thought. To find out, Nieder and his colleagues designed an experiment to test whether birds could have subjective experiences and tested it on, tested it on two carrion crows, Corvus coronae. First, the birds were trained to respond to visual stimuli. They were shown screens on which lights were displayed. If the crows saw the lights, they were to move their heads to show that, yes, they had seen something. Most of the lights were clear and unambiguous, easy to see, and the crows reliably reported that they had seen them. But some of the lights were a lot harder to spot, brief and faint. For these, the two crows sometimes reported seeing the signals, and sometimes they did not. This is where the subjective sensory experience enters the picture. For the experience, each of the crows was shown roughly 20,000 signals spread across dozens of sessions. Meanwhile, electronics implanted in their brains recorded their neural, neural, uh, neuronal activity. When the crows recorded a yes response to seeing the visual stimuli, neuronal activity was recorded in the interval between seeing the light and delivering the answer. When, there, there, when the answer was no, that elevated neural, neural, neuronal activity sorry, was not seen. This connection was so reliable that it was possible to predict the crow's response based on the brain's activity. Nider said, nerve cells that represent visual input without subjective components are expected to respond in the same way to a visual stimulus of constant intensity. He said, our results, however, conclusively show that the nerve cells at higher processing levels of the crow's brain are influenced by subjective experience, or more precisely, produce subjective experiences. The results confirm that subjective experiences are not exclusive to the primate brain, and that the complex layering of the mammalian brain is not a requirement for consciousness. In fact, a second new study finds that the smoothness of bird brains is not indicative at all of the lack of complexity. Using 3D polarized light imaging and neural circuit tracing techniques, biopsychologist Martin Stacko of Ruhr University Bochum in Germany and colleagues characterized the anatomy of pigeons and owl brains. They found that the cerebral architecture in both birds is strikingly similar to the cerebral structure of mammals. It's possible that similar cognitive abilities evolved independently in both birds and mammals, a phenomenon known as convergent evolution. But it's also possible that our brains are more closely related than their differences can suggest. Stacko and his team write, our findings suggest that it's likely that an ancient microcircuit 
that already existed in the last common stem amniote might have been evolutionary, evolution, evolutionarily conserved and partly modified in birds and mammals. Nider agrees with this possibility. He said, the last common ancestors of humans and crows lived 320 million years ago. It's possible that the consciousness of perception arose back then and has been passed down ever since. In any case, the capability of conscious experience can be re realized in differently structured brains and independently of the cerebral cortex. Now, he assumes that there's the theory of evolution. It could be that consciousness is uh, e existing in all animal life. Not only we see it even in plants. We know that plants, for example, tend to uh, close up and shrivel up in front of a person that has negative energy. So they must have some type of consciousness. It doesn't mean that we're evolved from plants, does it? Now, anyway, this means primary consciousness, he says, could be far more common across birds and mammals than we realized. If this proves true, the next possibility, possibly even more, uh, the next and possibly even more fascinating question is, do these animals also possess secondary consciousness? Are they aware that they are aware? This is by Michael Starr on Science Alert, and this is Unbended Reality. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.